Okay, uh, so this is our last video of this week. <clears throat> uh, so we have six, six videos, but we don't have videos for the lab. Okay, uh, so the last thing that I want to talk about is called views. Okay, so if you remember that a view is a kind of a temporal table, and to be more accurate, so view can be considered a stored query in a database. So for example, if you have some queries that you will use a lot and you don't want to write those very long SQL statement every time, so you can save that query as a view. So the view does not store the data itself, it just store the query. So next time you can just run that query um, as as a as a view and you will have the same result. So view can be accessed as a virtual table. So that means you can just call it as a table and also you can do the, some other select, sort, <coughs> etc. Okay, um, so the basically the syntax of creating a view is very simple. So create view and you have tell the view name. So you have give it a name just like you gave it a, a table name, as. And <laughs> In a syntax, you can see the query is very short. Actually, that is the major part. So that is how do you want to define the query. Okay. Uh, so here you can see one more example. So here I say I create a view. That view is in my demo schema and I call it professor course view. Because remember that I have the professor table and I have the course table. So those are stored separately. And sometimes I want to join two tables together so that I have the professor information and also course information. But I just need the information that when I want to view that for information only, but I don't want to store the data together as a new table. So that is a, a great scenario where we can use the view. So we store the query in our database and that is just one single sentence but we we still keep the data into separate tables okay so one beauty is that you can save the typing those drawing this very fancy drawing sql every time and also you can keep the result like you keep the table but the table is just like a virtual table so the data that um, underlying those tables are still stored separately and once you create that view, um, and you can treat that one as a virtual table, so that means you can just say select this view, and that will give you the result. Okay, uh, so that is a view, and let's see one example in PG Admin. Okay, uh, so here we we are in the PG Admin, so you can see here in my demo schema, uh, I don't have any views yet. So, but we are going to create. Um, Van view very quick. So let's say create view and you can give the name. So I want to save the view in my demo schema. And you have give it a meaningful name. So professor underscore course as okay. So now that means okay, so I'm going to create a view that combine combines information from the professor table and also from the course table. And here I say select. Okay, uh, so the indentation is not is n optional. So I, I put indentation here. Just want let you to understand the view better. So I say demo dot. So here I want to select demo professor name p name, and you can hear my son is crying because he wants to come into my office. Demo dot cost. And I also want information from the room of the cost. Demo dot cost dot room. Okay, so three information. From demo dot professor table in the drawing demo dot cost table on demo dot professor dot there the primary key 
in cons demo dot cost dot the foreign key. Okay, uh, so hopefully I don't have any errors, so I just go ahead and run it. Okay, continue and great. Okay, so the V has been created successfully, and you can see there's nothing, no result. However, so if I refresh this one, so now you can see I do have a professor course view, and it looks like a table. Okay, so because it has three columns. And now if you see, okay, so if I say select everything from demo dot professor course, okay. So now I have this result. Okay, so I have the, the two tables that joined together. And I, every time I want to see that information, I just run this. But, very very simple sentence instead of you see uh, run that query okay so that is the view and again you can define rules and you can define triggers etc so you can treat that as a table but the underlying table are still sep stored separate in this cost table and also in this professor table okay uh, so the last item of this week is index. Uh, so actually creating index is uh, is a long story, I would say. So um, so that uh, so you can create index on single column. You can add an index on, on, a on a combined column so that you can combine multiple columns together. So that's really depending on your query patterns. So. It is not recommended that you create index for each single individual column or each single combination of all the columns because uh, index is still a separate data structure so that can speed up data query, but that will uh, slow down the date update, insert or delete. So that's really depending on the pattern of your query. So you should be carefully design your index. So only design the index that you need. And the syntax of creating index is a uh, is also a little bit complicated. So we are not going to cover how to create index here. So actually, uh, in my experience, so when I need to create index, normally I create index in the PG admin. Okay. Or when I create index, I will say wait until I have. Uh, let's say if I know that I'm going to insert a huge amount of data, so I just need to create a very few index to maintain the data integrity. And once I have the like a stable uh, status where I have uh, the majority of data that inserted or updated, and then depending on my query patterns, I will start thinking about okay, what index I should create or what index I should delete. Okay, so we are not going to detail that how to create index. Uh, creating index is very important, but we don't have time to cover that. Uh, one thing that I do want to show you is that so you can check the performance of using index by using this explain statement. Okay, so explain statement is pretty simple. So explain. Uh, normally, there are a few options you can enable or disable. So, um, and explain, and also it just define a statement as here, so that can be a query. And the result will tell you the statistics that uh, how the query um, uh, performed in the database. So, was that very fast or was that very slow? So, if that is very, very slow, or you, if you, so that can help you to design your index. So, you can say, okay, so what index has been used in the query or not. And also if you use index, you can see the it should be faster. Or if by using index, there's no improvement improvement of your query, so you may want thinking drop dropping that index. So here is one example. So you can see here um, uh, we have very common query. So select everything from my cost table. Um, make a query where 
email in Cosmic GM email. However, we put everything that beneath explain statement. So that means this SQL will not be executed. Uh, it will also just explain that how the query will be performed. So you can see because here um, uh, the email is not a primary key on this cost table. So, and also email is not indexed on the cost table. So we can see it is using a filter. OK, and uh, the speed will be very, very uh, it's not very low because I don't have many records. Um, and here you can see now if I see make query based on room and on my cost table, I do have an index on the room field on the room column. And you can see that for this query, it is an index scan. OK, and ideally, so that will be more faster if, than this one. OK, so which means that if you know that you're going to run a lot of queries based on the room rather than the, the uh, professor's email, and then you may also okay, want to think about okay, adding an index on the room column. So that will save you a lot of time. Okay, uh, so let's see one example in PG Admin. And this is actually the last example. So let's see, first let's see select uh, everything from demo.cost. Okay, and you can see that here I have two records and I have four columns. So I have cost name, room, uh, profess email, and also cost number. And the cost number is a primary key, so that will be automatically indexed. And if you check my cost table, you can see that uh, I do have another index that is based on the room, cost room. Okay, so now let's see if we want to explain. Okay, so I want to explain this query. So it just simply gave me the results that just scans entire uh, table. However, if I say explain, I add, now I'm adding an where clause where p email equals my GMU email. Okay, so if I put that one, so if I don't add in that uh, explain, it will. Okay, so I have a typo. So if I don't add explain, so it will just return the result. But if I put explain uh, before that query, so it will return how the query at being executed. So here you can see. I'm using a filter based on this uh, to be more specific. That is a text filter based on the P email and also the cost, which normally will be the time that's spent. I, I believe I'm not sure. Um, so you can see that is you by, by using a text filter. So if you have very huge data set and you will see that that is actually uh, will be slower. So if I choose that one to room, and remember that I do have index on the room. So now you can see that the index, now this scan is an index scan. So that will be more efficient than the text filter. And ideally you will see that the cost will be smaller. So that means that it will be faster. Uh, here you, you will not see the difference. That's really because I, I only have two records. So there's no really big difference here. Uh, however, if you do have, let's say, millions of records and now and then you you will definitely see a, see a difference. OK, uh, so that for this week's uh, lecture. So again, I highly recommend that you, you are following on those demos that in PG admin so that you will have a bad understanding of, of those SQL. And those will also help you finish the labs of this week.